Ryzen 5 plus Vega or Ryzen 3? Wait. That's not Ryzen 3. Ryzen 3 plus Vega or Ryzen 5 plus Vega? I think it's time for another comparison. All right, so bottom line, half of the internet has already reviewed these. In fact, uh, on July 7th, a lot of channels just went out and bought the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 3. So AMD sent me the Ryzen 5 plus Vega. I picked up the Ryzen 3 plus Vega at Micro Center. These are Zen Plus. These are not seven nanometer. Some people, especially even on our own forum, are confused about, it's like, oh, that's third gen Ryzen because it's three, no. No, it's not how that works. The APUs always run a generation behind in terms of silicon. There are some significant differences between the original Zen Ryzen plus Vega and these Ryzen plus Vega. In fact, the difference between the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 5 is even more pronounced, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look. So I think the performance on this, really to do an apples to apples comparison, is pretty challenging. You look at the game performance and you, you sort of, it's like what is gonna produce a good experience and, and what's your use case? I think that there are two pretty good use cases for Ryzen plus Vega. One is like a starter computer, a very low cost computer that is capable of gaming. The Ryzen 5 uh, is capable, it's four cores, eight threads. Um, and it's a soldered situation with the integrated heat spreader. So it, it means that it's able to deal with the heat a little bit better than last gen Ryzen plus Vega. And it's even, uh, you know, the Ryzen 3 is not soldered as a cost saving measure, but the Ryzen 5 plus Vega is about $50 more expensive. The cooler is a little bit better maybe. And, and that kind of thing. The Ryzen 5 first gen cooler um, I think was all aluminum. There was a version of the cooler that had a copper slug vapor chamber. I had a little, I mean, I mentioned that in a couple of videos ago um, when we were looking at differences with uh, the 3600X and the 3600 because the 3600X this time around, it's an all aluminum heat sink as opposed to having the copper vapor chamber slug thingy, um, which is an undocumented change, but it's fine. I mean, it's still, it's effective, it's just louder. Um, so Ryzen 3 at $99 really steals the show. It's $99. I mean, you pair that with something like the ASRock Desk Mini A300, that's like the ultimate home theater machine, especially if you're gonna stream a game from another computer. So like if you're gonna do Steam in-home streaming, the ASRock Desk Mini A300 plus the Ryzen 3, that's pretty much unstoppable. But there's not really any reason to, like if second gen is on sale and even less than $100, then second gen would be would be fine. This is the memory that I used to test this. The team group, 3200, it's pretty good. It's not the absolute top shelf stuff, but 3200, uh, when you can run the XMP3200 profile, definitely is gonna help on GPU performance because system memory is regular memory. But for 720p gaming, you can get about 60 FPS and on like medium low and for 1080p generally you can get 30 fps on like low on some games but not every game the esports titles basically but not so much the triple a games it, it varies a bit from game to game and there are a lot of other channels that have done exhaustive benchmarking on a lot of different games um linux support is better on ryzen plus vega right now than even with the navi you know, full-fledged dedicated GPUs. So if you are a Linux user, you're gonna have a pretty good experience with these APUs. Certainly a much, much better experience than Linux users had with the first generation APUs because it was really sketchy for a long time for a lot of reasons. These are Zen Plus update, as I said. This is, these are not seven nanometer. So there's not a huge change for these APUs. And AMD is taking steps to make sure that support for their next gen of APUs is in the Linux kernel as soon as possible. So learning from mistakes, sounds good, is awesome. Yay, happy times. So, now some people might complain that in the UEFI you can't set more than two gigabytes of usage for VRAM. 
but actually you don't really even need to set two gigabytes, like 512 megs is fine. This is the amount of memory reserved from the system for the GPU. But the reality with this type of graphics is that the game is just gonna use whatever memory it sees fit. Only a buggy game that misdetects how like the memory situation is, is going to respond to having more dedicated VRAM. It's a really, I'm sort of glossing over some stuff, but by and large, unless there is a problem with the game, setting 512 megs for your reserved memory is what you should do, and that should not make a difference inside most games unless there's a problem with the game programming. And you're gonna have to trust me on that, and if you wanna duke it out in the forum and argue with me, you can come to the level one forums and we can argue about that, but from a programmer's perspective, I'm not wrong, so. For me, if I were building a machine for like my third cousin or like, you know, the scrappy little like super poor kid at the end of the neighborhood that's trying really hard, but you know, I just kind of feel bad for, uh, totally would buy the Ryzen 5 over the Ryzen 3 because I think the price, <laughs> the, the price difference would be worth the extra twinkle in the eye of like, you know, the scrappy underdog paper boy that, you know, lives at the end of the street or whatever because uh, the performance is there. Having the extra uh, four threads, so the Ryzen 3 is four core, four thread, Ryzen 5 is four core, eight threads. Uh, the SMT implementation on the CPUs is pretty good. You don't really lose a lot not having the four threads, but having the four threads is just a little bit more. Generally, uh, it's a pretty significant uplift over the first generation. The Zen Plus cores, you know, nothing unexpected there, but I am surprised that we're seeing this much difference from just tweaking Vega a little bit for this next round of CPUs. If you already have Ryzen Plus Vega, does it make sense to upgrade? I don't think so. I, I don't think there's enough of a difference here with this generation to really make it worth your while. If you've got a first gen Ryzen Plus Vega, like Ryzen 3, does it make sense to upgrade to the Ryzen 5? Again, I don't think so. I don't. I think that your money would be better spent on either a more significant system upgrade or a dedicated GPU. If you go with something like the Desk Mini A300, then you're never going to be able to add another GPU to the system. But if it's for Scrappy Paperboy at the end of the street, you know, it's hard to go wrong. One caution that I would have for you is if you do go with the ASRock Desk Mini A300, with the Ryzen 5 plus Vega, the cooler's not gonna fit. The A300 comes with a cooler, but the cooler that the A300 comes with is really borderline for the Ryzen 5 plus Vega. It really is. I really wish that ASRock would bundle a better cooler now that the second gen, um, you know, Ryzen plus Vega CPUs are out. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you could get an aftermarket cooler, but then you're spending kind of a lot of money that you really shouldn't be spending. So if you aren't sure, just get the Ryzen 3 for the desk mini and you'll be fine. I'd rather have 16 gigs of memory than eight gigs of memory plus the Ryzen 5, but that's just me. Like if you were just doing it strictly purely for gaming, you would be okay with the eight gigabytes of memory. That's just me being impatient that no oh, eight gigs is not enough. Uh, if you get a cheap X370 board that has support for this APU, it's really hard to go wrong. I mean, those first gen boards are basically on fire sale, uh, on clearance, you know, 50 to hundred dollars plus the cost of your CPU, which is, you know, hundred to 165 at the upper end US for the Ryzen 5 plus Vega price for the extra performance and the better cooler that it gives you, like 40 to $55 at the most price difference. But the uh, $99 Ryzen 3, that's a, that's a heck of a deal. I mean, that's, that's really the deal of the century. But the Ryzen 5 is a better balanced CPU, but it comes at a cost premium. Both of these are incredible, incredible starter CPUs for you know, second PC, living room PC, home theater PC, something like that. These are incredible CPUs for that use case. And you should, if you're thinking about building something like that, you should take a look at that. Maybe we should do a video on that. I don't know. I'm Wendell, this is Level One. I'm signing out and I'll see you later.